Welcome viewers. Our guests in this program are two deans from Northern Lights College, Ms. Lisa Verbisky and Dr. Steve Rowe. So welcome to the program, Lisa. Welcome, Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Faisal. Welcome, please. So beginning from Steve, what are your responsibilities at Northern Lights College? Well, Lisa is the associate dean for academic and vocational programs, and I'm the dean. Um, that means that with the support of many, many people, including program chairs and program leaders, we're responsible for a fairly broad portfolio of programs. And we, it's early for confessions, but we were joking on the drive over, and we sometimes think I'm at my best when I'm functioning as Lisa's uh, secretary. <laughs> so uh, Lisa has a lot of ideas. It's often hard to keep up with her. <laughs> Excellent. So what are, Lisa, the main academic programs of the Northern Lights College? Yeah, well, I brought a list because there really are a lot of programs and I can't remember all of them. So uh, the programs that we, uh, that are within our portfolio include uh, the upgrading programs. So somebody can come to the college and take really what equates to high school courses. And so they can upgrade and sometimes they can do upgrading while taking some post-secondary courses. So that's a nice combi combination. And of course, they're, they're in um, an adult atmosphere. So it's uh, in that way, it, it serves those students well if they need to do upgrading. We also have business management and technology programs and uh, many different programs business management diploma, the business management certificate. We also have some new programs, the executive assistant diploma, and that's a combination of applied business technology and business management courses that can then transfer to Thompson Rivers University. We also have a, a nice little certificate called the advanced uh, business management certificate, and that builds on uh, individuals who have existing training, say they are an electrician and they want to open their own business, they can take this program to gain the entrepreneurship skills that they would need to do that. And we have some post-degree diploma business management programming, uh, one in information technology, one in health administration, and one uh, a general program. So again, this, the, these types of programs are designed for individuals who have existing post-secondary education and they want to add uh, business management skills to that training. We also have criminology programming that's been around for a long time and very popular. We have uh, our early childhood education and care diploma. And uh, we have our ACO programming where you can, uh, it's, a, it's a, a collaboration with Simon Fraser University. You can start with NLC and uh, take the ACO program and with a, a few other courses and uh, lots more complications to it, uh, you can uh, be ready to be certified as a teacher in British Columbia. So that's really a nice thing. You can get a degree without leaving uh, this region. Excellent. So, yeah, very good. We also have our education assistant uh, diploma and certificate. So for those individuals who want to work with children, but maybe not in uh, a teaching capacity. They want to be more of an assistant in the classroom. We also have two new programs in the realm of environmental stewardship, uh, an archeology span diploma, relatively new. So for those individuals who want to study for a couple of years, go out into the field and do assessments where whenever there's some kind of uh, development occurring, we need archaeology assistance to help out with that work. And uh, we have a, a new land and water resources diploma. It's uh, akin to a program we had a number of years ago, trains individuals to work um, on land reclamation, land remediation, and uh, water conservation. So again, another program that really is designed for individuals who want to work in this area with our natural resource developments. Excellent. Yeah. We also have our health sciences and human services. So healthcare assistant, 
program. We have a practical nursing program. Uh, it's a diploma program. We have our social services worker diploma, a two-year program where you can uh, work in the social services. And then we just developed a new program that uh, is essentially the first year of social services, but it's for those individuals who want to work in, in uh, First Nations communities, uh, and it's called an, an Indigenous Human Services Certificate. So doing social services work, but in, the, uh, in a capacity uh, working with our Indigenous communities. Very good. Yeah. And then uh, we have, of course, university transfer. So uh, an individual can do uh, one or two years of, of courses with Northern Lights College and transfer on to other institutions. And we're very happy to uh, announce that we've signed uh, agreements with the University of Victoria, the University of Alberta, to offer the first year uh, engineering at our institution and the students can then transfer into the second year of an engineering degree program at those institutions. So a really great program and a great opportunity for students here. Excellent. We'll talk more about it. Yeah. yeah please continue. I think that's it. Did I miss any? You covered everything. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> I thought we you? were going to split it. <laughs> sorry. But you were on a roll. <laughs> I have a list. <laughs> I can ask you, Steve, uh, anything you add uh, further about vocational programs, please tell us more about them. Well, I think perhaps of our health sciences programs, healthcare assistant and practical nursing, uh, healthcare assistants are the frontline caregivers in the Canadian healthcare system. They play such a critical role in providing personal care for patients, often for elderly. They work in long-term residential care facilities and hospitals, in assisted living environments, and they do home support as well. So again, just a really critical program in regard to meeting labour market demand here. Often our healthcare assistant students have job offers from Northern Health before they graduate. And the same is too, uh, true of practical nursing as well. Uh, today, practical nursing is defined by an increasing scope of practice. Uh, practical nurses administer medications, injections, take vital signs. They perform wound care, do head-to-toe assessments and really perform an increasingly important role in uh, acute care as well. And the labor market demand, once again, as I mentioned for practical nurses, is really strong. So we're proud of all those programs. And as Lisa mentioned, uh, career and college preparation really is a gateway to everything, to all of the post-secondary programs that Northern Lights College offers, both trades and the academic programs that are primarily under discussion here. What I think is so important for our career and college preparation program, or so key to the service that it offers, is that it provides adults with an opportunity to do academic upgrading in uh, in an adult uh, learning environment, uh, a very friendly, respectful, flexible adult uh, learning environment. So we really do a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Thank you. And how do you think these programs they prepare students for further post-secondary education? Well, you know, the, I think the the most obvious answer to that is that. We, we offer courses at our college that can transfer very easily, and we can see that transfer on the BC Transfer Guide, uh, to institutions across BC. So, you know, for somebody who is interested in starting here, they can do that and then transfer on to another institution. But I think there are some more uh, subtle aspects to how these programs help students continue on. And uh, I, I look at programs like the archeology span diploma or the land and water resources diploma or the criminology diploma, management diplomas as well. A student can step out after two years with a credential and maybe that student um, 
isn't sure that they want to go on and do a degree. Maybe they had struggled in the past with their education. But being able to bite off two years is, is something that is far more palatable to students, um, certain students, not all students, but very palatable to them, very doable. So they can get that two years under their belt and then they can go off into the real world, the working world, and, and try out their skills and, and gain confidence, apply their knowledge so that it becomes very firmly embedded and really think about whether or not they uh, want to go on to university and if they think they're able to go on to university. And I've seen it so many times where a student who really had no idea of going on to do a degree, a four-year degree, does a diploma, they, they gain that confidence, they see they can do it, they get a bit of work experience, and then they say, you know what, I'm going to go back and I'm going to go into the third and fourth year of a degree program. And I think that that's a, a really nice aspect of starting at a community college. Absolutely, very good. Mm -hmm. And similarly, Steve, what do you believe are the unique strengths of academic and vocational programs of Northern Lights College? Mm. Well, I think first and foremost, I would identify our instructors as a really key strength. The instructors at Northern Lights College have the kind of credentials that uh, university professors have. They have graduate degrees, master's degrees, and PhDs in their discipline. So they are experts in their field, highly trained, but they are also first and foremost instructors or teachers, highly skilled educators who are completely dedicated to student success. So students at Northern Lights College receive a lot of individualized care and attention. Our classes are larger than they used to be, but still compared to a uh, university, we have relatively small classes. And all of this, I think, contributes to the quality of our programs and means that in many ways we're defined by an ethic of care. Um, we have retained a very caring environment which is, I think, a, just a tremendous thing for students who are making that transition into post-secondary. We're very accessible, too, in multiple ways. Most of our campuses are minutes away from people's houses, so we're very easy to reach. And that accessibility extends to seating in programs as well. Generally, uh, we can make space for students. We can find a spot for them in their program of choice. If they need to do upgrading first, again, the career and college preparation program is an option for them. Thirdly, uh, affordability is a critical consideration too. Our tuition is lower than tuition at most uh, universities, really at any of the universities in British Columbia. And so students, particularly students who have just graduated from high school and may still be living at home, can save a lot of money by coming to Northern Lights College. We have bursaries and scholarships available to new students as well, which provides further financial advantages to them. So, you know, I think we're looking at a powerful combination of factors that make Northern Lights College a really good choice for people. The quality of education we provide is outstanding. We're accessible, we're affordable. Um, and I really, in speaking about that, I speak not only as an administrator at Northern Lights, but as a parent too. Um, my daughter went to Northern Lights College for several years before moving on to the University of Victoria to complete a degree. And she says that her experience at Northern Lights College was foundational, formative to the success that she experienced in the latter stages of the degree program that she went into. So, we're a really good place for students to start and again offer these complete certificate and diploma programs that can lead to immediate employment as well. Excellent. And would you like to add here for how many years now you have served Northern Lights College? Oh, I think I'm into 24, 24 years. Um, much of that as an instructor and for the past seven years as an administrator. Excellent. Yeah. And what are the dual credit programs of the Northern Lights College? 
Well, so the dual pre credit programs, maybe I'll just define what they are for those who might not know. We have uh, students at the high school who are taking programs or courses with Northern Lights College and those students get elective credit at the high school and they get post-secondary credit for whichever course they're taking. So it's a, a very good opportunity for students to test the waters, if you will, um, what it's like to be a student at the post-secondary level. And so we're particularly proud of this program because we really do think that it helps students to make that transition from the high school to uh, post-secondary education, whether it is a program or an individual course. And uh, we do have a, a great relationship with our school districts. I would say that we have one of the most successful dual credit programs across um, BC. So it, it does provide that opportunity for students to see what uh, that post-secondary course or program is like, but in a very supportive environment. And that's not to say that we water down the courses or anything like that for the students, but we are aware that they're in our classes. We consult with the, the dual cre credit coordinator at the high school just to make sure that the students are staying on track. A really great opportunity for students to take a course and then maybe when they go on to uh, an institution such as UBC or if they stay with Northern Lights College, they've already got that course under their belt. So maybe in their first year of taking a program, their course load might be a bit lighter. And of course, as I described, they already know what it's like to take a, a course at the post-secondary level. So we're really setting them up for success in what is typically that crunch year, that first year when you transition from high school to post-secondary. This is a very good idea. In some other countries also, like in the Swiss system, they have tried to involve the youth so the transition becomes easier, so the unemployment for youth is among the minimum in the world. Mm -hmm. Good. And Northern Lights College covers a very vast area. So the academic and vocational programs, please tell us which communities do they serve? We have five campuses. I'll, I'll go ahead and name them. Uh, Tumbler Ridge, Chetwind, Dawson Creek, Fort St. John, and Fort Nelson. And we operate academic and vocational programs out of all five campuses. We also have learning centers in a number of communities, including communities in the northwest portion of the province, in Dees Lake and Atlin. The geographical scope is very broad, and that also enables us to have very close ties with Indigenous communities in our region too. Um, we engage in programming or have engaged in programming with the McLeod Lake Band, Soto First Nations, West Moberly, um, Blueberry, Doig, Prophet River, Fort Nelson First Nation. So we're really proud of the relationships that we're forging with Indigenous communities across Northern BC. Excellent. And what's the role of international education at Northern Lights College? Well, the role of international education is to bring students from across the world to our Northern Lights College campuses. So in the last five years or so, we have uh, grown quite a bit in terms of our international students. And at this point, we are trying to diversify our student body so that we're just bringing in a, a greater variety of students from different countries. And there's many things that our international students bring to us. They bring uh, exposure to different cultures. And they also, frankly, bring us a, a minimum number of students needed to run additional programming. So, for example, if we can bring in, uh, say, five or six international students to be in our archaeology diploma, then if we've got five or six domestic students interested in that program, it's now viable to run that program. So they're, they're very valuable to our college in that way. So apart from the, the great diversity that they bring to our college, 
they also bring that ability to offer greater diversity of programming. So we really enjoy our international students. A lot of them are, are characters and they have a different perspective on education, just the way they approach life. And I think we all get a lot out of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. It's always excellent to have classes full of bright, diverse, domestic and international students. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure domestic students, international students, wherever we come across them, they are motivated, they are running so many organizations, working doing a lot of services for the communities also, getting employment, making progress, the goal of educators. Mm -hmm. And Steve, what would you like to highlight more about the new programs which have been developed in the last one year? My goodness, yes. We really have done a lot of program development just over the past couple of years. As Lisa mentioned, in the area of business management, we have a new executive assistant diploma program. and. That credential is designed for applied business technology certificate graduates, students who have a certificate and want to upgrade their credential to a diploma. And the diploma uh, enables them to pursue uh, managerial jobs, uh, also to transfer into business degrees at Thompson Rivers uh, University. The graduates of the Executive Assistant Diploma have guaranteed admission into the second year of TRU's Bachelor of Business Administration or TRU's Bachelor of Commerce degrees. So someone can start with a certificate program at Northern Lights College, move to a diploma, and then move on to degree programs. So the laddering, the sort of three-step laddering there, really is a wonderful opportunity. And you mentioned the advanced certificate in management as well. This is an online program. It's designed for people who are currently working as frontline managers, really in any sector, public or private. And it affords managers an opportunity to build, enhance their uh, managerial skills. And really, again, it's just an excellent opportunity for people who are out there working to attend a post-secondary program on a part-time basis. We're very proud of the of these land stewardship programs that we recently um, introduced. Again, the archaeology diploma I think is important to our region. The land and water resources diploma focuses on the reclamation of sites that have undergone industrial activity and you know clearly in northeastern BC that is a program that performs such an important role. And the engineering transfer pathways, we're very proud of that as well. As Lisa mentioned, um, students can attend first year engineering courses at Northern Lights College and then have guaranteed admission into second year engineering programs at the University of Alberta or the University of Victoria. So um, I'd encourage people really, if you'd like to explore the programs that the Academic and Vocational Division offers, you could go uh, to the Northern Lights College homepage and there's a Programs tab and if you click on that, Academic and Vocational Programs will appear and most of what we've been talking about is listed there. Excellent. And Lisa, how do you think it would support the learners and even their parents in the local community having their children here for the first year? So what's your opinion? You know, I go into the high schools quite a bit to talk about uh, just that. And uh, I do often joke, actually, that very often we're telling the students how great it is to study at Northern Lights College because you can stay at home for the first year. And most often, the high school students groan <laughs> when we say that. <laughs> they don't want to stay at home. But the reality is, is that uh, going off for your first year to UBC, for example, um, is going to be a challenge both financially and in terms of being away from home for the first time. So I think that there are a lot of benefits to students if they can get that experience that first year at home and at their community college for many of the reasons that Steve was talking about. You know, we've got these amazing instructors who really care about their students and they do everything they can to 
bring the students um, up. You know, they, they, they help them to be successful. So, you know, you can save on tuition, you can save on uh, room and board if you stay with your parents and uh, just have a really great educational experience in a supportive environment. Thank you for highlighting it. Obviously, for the community colleges, there are many strengths. And no doubt, universities, they've got their own strengths. Some of the universities, they are huge infrastructures. They have 50,000 plus students. But the tuition sometimes I've seen for some universities for two-year programs, particularly in states, the highest I've seen is around one hundred eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollars mm -hmm. and executive mba programs are almost equally expensive one hundred twenty thousand plus so looking at that and then the support we have in the public sector system plus the option sometimes for students to apply for student loans and getting all that support plus being close to parents all that helps mm -hmm. good thank you for highlighting it so steve can you please comment on the famous quote of john f kennedy the goal of education is advancement of knowledge and the dissemination of truth. That's a very interesting quote. What I would like to do, I think, is reinterpret that quote in light of our society today. Um, I believe when John F. Kennedy uttered that passage, it was prior to his term as president. I think it, he was a senator at the time in the mid-1950s. And in that era, uh, Kennedy in his speech, and I think in society at large, um, there was a sense that knowledge and truth could be singular, pure, and perhaps even simple. Uh, but our world today uh, is even more complex than it was in the 50s and the 60s. Today, we have a rich understanding that knowledge is constructed that it emerges from a, a variety of experiential and cultural frameworks. Truth also is so dependent on circumstance, culture, history, on individual experience that might be affected by factors such as race, class, and gender. So we tend to talk now not about a singular truth with a capital T, but about plural truths with smaller t's. And I think we're the wiser for it. Um, we have a richer appreciation for diversity. And ultimately, that can make us more tolerant, more understanding, more compassionate. Um, so again, a fabulous quote that perhaps resonates somewhat differently today than it did um, 60 years ago. Excellent. And please also comment on the famous quote of Tolstoy, the only purpose of education is freedom and the only method is experience. I'd be inclined again to reinterpret a quotation in light of realities that we face today and perhaps most importantly today when we think of freedom, um, we might regard it as a mental capacity. And freedom today, I think, or at least an important aspect of freedom, is the intellectual mental capacity to engage in critical, uh, independent thinking. Uh, and this is certainly something we encourage at Northern Lights College. In the academic and vocational programs, uh, instructors, students regard the classroom as a venue for free, respectful, open uh, discussion. So freedom of self, for freedom of mind, I think is so critical. And in regard to the experience part of Tolstoy's quote, um, I think what I've described about the environment at Northern Lights College means that there really is no separation between the real world and the classroom. The classroom is a venue where students and instructors deeply engage the real world, discuss real issues, and perhaps shape and influence the world beyond the classroom. Excellent points. And how do you ensure academic freedom at the college? Well, I think that involves a respect for the independent critical thinking that I mentioned a moment ago. 
we encourage instructors, of course, to rely on their training to bring new vital ideas to the classroom and encourage students to be knowledge makers as well. So, you know, if you were to visit a Northern Lights College classroom, I think often what you see is a spirit of mutual inquiry in which knowledge is constructed through discussion between the instructor and student. The, the notion of a sage on the stage, an all-knowing instructor who has the answers to everything, that belongs to a bygone era. And um, academic freedom means that instructors learn from students and from each other. Excellent points. And what do you think, Lisa, are the best things about Northern Lights College which you love? Oh, well, um, similar to Steve, I've been there for a very long time, about 20 years. So there, there are lots of things that I love about the college. Um, but I think for me, when I, when I think about the college, I think about community. And in so many different ways, there, there is so much back and forth. I think the college gives to the community and I think we take from the community but we are definitely part of the community and an important part of it. I think that you see that when you look at our students. They, um, you know, they, they, they know us, whether it's the janitor or it's the dean. They know who we are and we know who they are. I think they, that level of um, intimacy is something that makes us very special. And uh, we also open our doors to the community very often. We recently had the fashion show, the international fashion show, where members from the community were um, showcasing their, their attire, their cultural attire. And so that was a, a lovely example of how the community comes in and benefits from having the college in their community. Um, yeah, it's just that give and take, and, and so we're all very happy to be a part of that community and, and serve the community. Very good. And Steve, how do you love the Northern Lights College? Oh, I had such an appreciation for Northern Lights College from day one. Um, there is such a collegial, friendly environment there, um, and you know, that's true of the relationships that staff have and it extends to the way we greet and treat students as well. Um, I'm very proud to be a member of the Northern Lights College community and would encourage anyone in our region who isn't familiar perhaps with the campus closest to them to visit and to explore all of the programming opportunities that we provide. Thank you. So as Northern Lights College community members, all of us love NLC, and this is great. Thank you for coming to our program, and we wish you all the best. Oh, thank, thank you, you Lisa, Faisal. and thank you, Steve. Thank you, Faisal. Thank you so much.